Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, January 7th, 2018. I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. It is wickedly cold here in North Jersey. <laughs> and each day that I come on here, the temperatures are lower and lower. It was, um, <clears throat> I think like it's like three degrees uh, here. And it probably hit zero during the night, but um very very cold but like i i've been saying every day the sun is so beautiful and bright and the skies are so blue so you know if you're dressed right and you have to go out it's just and you love the lord you're gonna you're gonna look past that cold <laughs> as long as you're bundled up i have a devotional for you today but first, I would like to see the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Okay, let's see, where are we? Okay. It's called Your Fountain of Life. And the reading is from Proverbs 14.27. And it says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life mm -hmm. the fear of the lord you know this is such a controversial um statement that was made in the bible because many people interpret that many different ways and one very popular way that they uh interpret it is that they're afraid of the father and what he will do to them. Almost like if you had an abusive parent and you spoke out of turn and, and, and you'd get slapped and you'd go flying across the room. There are a lot of people who view the father that way. And that is not what this passage means. And I'm going to read it to you. It says, as you read today's verse, you may be longing for that fountain of life to spring up and renew your energy and strength. There are so many burdens and obstacles that can drain you of the will to go on. But it may seem confusing that the fear of the Lord is the path to that life. After all, there is nothing that tires you like anxiety and if anybody has had to live with anxiety you know what i'm saying i've had anxiety for years and um your adrenal glands work overtime believe me 24 7. but understand this verse does not mean that you should be afraid of god as a christian you have no reason to be frightened of your loving Heavenly Father. That's right. If you're a Christian, not in name only, but if you're born again, you have no reason to be afraid of your Father. None whatsoever. Uh, rather, the original Hebrew word for fear means that you should be reverent in the Lord's presence and respectful of his ways. That's what it means. Just like, you know, when you're growing up, if you had respect for your father and you had a decent father who wasn't abusive and uh, you didn't do what you were instructed to do, um, you know, your father would uh, take something away from you, chastise you as a form of discipline. And our Heavenly Father is the same way, but he won't. He's not, he's not to be afraid. Listen, the discipline comes from love, not from control. When people 
um, have little children here, a lot of times they're dysfunctional and they use that uh, authority over their children to exercise uh, control and power. And that's what you call abuse. It's not, the father's not like that. God's awesome character should inspire you to take all he says very seriously. He is holy, he is righteous, and he's just. The only one worthy of your highest praise and worship. And recognize, and recognizing that will help you realize how absolutely blessed you are to have his guidance, protection, and love. You would not want to be out of the will of the Father. It's so scary. It's so scary to walk on this planet without the um, the protection, the love, and the eyes of the Lord upon you, watching every breath you take and every footstep you take. So, what today's verse, what today's verse really means is. That when you have a respect for God and obey what he says, you don't have to fear for your life because you know that he will lead you in the best way possible. He will give you strength when you are weary and fill your life with his power. Isaiah 40, 29 says that. If you do not have an adequate view of who the Father really is, you will be tempted to rely on yourself. Sometimes I hear people's statements on Facebook here, I mean on uh, YouTube, and they're shaking in their boots for fear of the Father. That's not, that's not, it's an improper fear. Only if you're not born again, and only if you're out of the will of the Father, you're going to displease him, and, um, you know, he'll discipline you, but never give you more than you can bear he's not going to do he's he's not a dictator he gave you free will and if you saved you sealed um when your confidence is based on the matchless character of god you can be joyful no matter what trial comes so trust him and experience the fountain of life he created you to enjoy. And a prayer we can say is, Father, you alone are God and worthy of my praise. May your life th flow through me. Amen. Listen, you know, when I, when I feel upset about maybe, you know, something that I'm doing that I feel is not in the Father's will or would, would displease him, it makes me upset that I would displease him. You know, I want to please the Father. I want the Father to be proud of me. I don't want, uh, I want to have victory over my flesh. Okay. And um, granted, you know, we're living in the world where we're, nobody's perfect here. But the closer you get to your Heavenly Father, um, the more you want to do what would please him rather than what would please your flesh. That's the difference. That's the difference. Uh, we can always make an excuse that we can't throw something off. But, you know, if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, the Holy Spirit is power to throw that off. And your intimacy with the Father gives you power to throw things off. Because what happens is you want to please the Father more than you want to please your own flesh. And that gives you the ability uh, to, to resist. I'm learning about that the hard way myself. So, um, you know, every day that you walk with the Father um, is a learning experience. It's a journey. Um, it's a roller coaster, I'll admit it, because the Holy Spirit will reveal things in you that you didn't know were there. And you'll have to deal with it. It's, it's called the truth okay but the father's merciful you know he 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 won't he won't show you too much about yourself that you would want to destroy yourself i mean you know he give you little bits at a time so you can handle it 
There's so much about ourselves that we are, that we do, in the flesh, that we don't even realize we're doing. Okay? And the walk with the Lord. That's why you have to read your Bible and stop just going, for, hopping from one video to another. Because you'll never realize anything about yourself. You're just entertaining your own flesh. And it's easier to watch uh, internet TV, I call it, than it is to read your Bible and learn because it's work. And the nature of the flesh is that it doesn't want to work. It doesn't want to push against the resistance because that's what work is, is resistance. That's why people don't get on treadmills. <laughs> okay. You could just walk out your door and see in this snowy weather, the state of humanity. I, I drive along and I see people trying to shovel. And most of the people that are trying to shovel are so overweight, they can't even breathe. They're gasping. Okay? Because everybody is sitting in front of the internet and the TV and playing games and nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to work. So they're all out of shape. And if they have to rely on their own human resources to save their own life, they wouldn't be able to because of the neglect and the greed of the flesh. Listen, I'll tell you, you know, I'm not a popular person. I have never been popular. And even in in the, in the Christian community, I won't be popular because I don't hold back. I'll tell you exactly how it is. And uh, eventually, I'm going to hit a nerve in your body. And you're going to have a choice to either unsubscribe or to get angry or have a reaction. That's okay. Many people, I've had many people react to me and they cool off and they come back because they want the truth more than they want their reaction. Just like last night, you know, I had victory last night. Um, a lot of times I have the impulse to get up um, even out of the bed, like at maybe 11 o'clock and have a snack or a dessert. And then uh, last night I said, no, I love my father more than I love that dessert. And that impulse left me, and that was a victory. And that's the first time I actually spoke that out loud to Satan, and he fled. And um, I slept on an empty stomach, which was very good. Um, so this is just what I'm trying to say. I'm just using these little things that happened to me as an example to show you. Okay. You, Satan will pull you into um, a false reality real fast. He's like carbon monoxide. You know, you'll think that you're hopping around from one video to another, that you're learning, that you're that you're a good Christian because you because you're going from this video to that video and you're watching it. <laughs> All you're doing is entertaining your flesh. Look at these people who are date setting and everything. There's, some of them are so um, intellectual and, and, and just so intelligent the way they figure these things out. But look, we're still here. And look how much time you invested in following those channels when you could have been reading the scripture and learning what God has in mind for you to know. Not what someone. I want to tell you something about the rapture. If you're drawn to dreams and vision channels and you're drawn to um, uh, date setting rapture channels and all of that, um, it's no different than the occult. Because the occult is wanting to know something that we're not supposed to know. There's a veil between us and the other side for a reason, okay? And, um, you know, sometimes I go on these channels, you know, passing through and, you know, uh, somebody puts out a dream uh, uh, or a vision um, post and 
within an hour there's 3,000 views on it. That just goes to show you the state of people where they're at. They would rather listen to someone's juicy dream. It's like a, watching a soap opera, okay? Then, then read and hear what the Father has to say by putting their, their face in the Bible. And the, the dreams and the visions just keep happening and happening year after year after year. And what more do you know now than you did three years ago by listening to them? You just entertained your flesh. That's all you did. That's all you did. See, if they're not giving you the word and they're not bringing a message to you that can apply to your own life, what are you doing there? Think about it. Are you captivated by the person's personality? Hmm? Title worship, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the Lord, the Lord. The truth will set you free. And on that note, I'll say have a beautiful day in the Lord, people. I bring you the truth. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. He wants you to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Have a beautiful Sunday. God bless.